I have zero confidence actually in what we're doing right now because I have never done this before. I'm going on an African safari, or do you say like going on safari? Is that like the cool way to say it? I've heard people say it. Anyway, I'm going to Africa, going to Kenya with a group of photographers and no, for once I am not leading this trip like I usually do. I usually lead international photo trips, but for this one, I'm going on a trip to photograph lions, tigers, giraffes, and elephants, and all sorts of fun things like that. And to be honest, I have no idea if I'm going to enjoy it at all. The only other time I've really photographed wildlife is when I did bird photography with Chelsea Northrup for the Budget Photography Gear Wars series. And it was okay. I can't say it was my favorite thing, but then of course birds are not particularly an animal I'm like, ooh, about versus dogs, for example. Yes, I know. Are you mad that I'm leaving? Are you mad? I'm gonna photograph the other animals, not you. I do, however, really love lions, uh, tires actually, a whole bunch, um, and that kind of wildlife. So maybe I will enjoy this a little bit more. I'm gonna go over not just the gear that I'm bringing, but all of the vaccines I had to take, as well as the personal gear that I'm bringing. Uh, and fair warning to uh, anyone who's on this trip, yeah, I'll be in my period. So hope the lions don't come after the smell of blood. <laughs> It. I did. You can leave that in there. I don't care. So the person who's leading this photo trip and going to teach me a bit about wildlife photography is Matt Dirksen. He's got awesome content, so make sure you check that out. The real challenge is if Jared Poland actually makes it back to the United States without me killing him. Because yes, I'm going on a photo trip with Jared Polin, Manny Ortiz, and apparently a bunch of MLB players that I don't actually know. So camping with strangers, but it's a little bit glamping. Thankfully, I do have Jared's friend Katie, who I do know, who hopefully, uh, I don't know, maybe she'll be on her period too, and then we can really commiserate. Let's get to the gear. Now, as a wedding and portrait photographer, especially when it comes to weddings, I am always looking to travel light. So keep that in mind traveling light is my main goal. And of course, being able to switch back and forth between lenses or cameras quickly. That's what I'm going for. One thing you will not see here and just start the dumb girl comments immediately, you're not gonna see sticks, meaning monopods and tripods. I recently photographed a golf tournament with this bad boy lens that we will go over and I tried using a monopod and yes, it was a good one, but I just can't stand it. I cannot stand being locked down. I absolutely hate it. I feel like I can't move as fast. I can't get the shots that I want. I really hate it. So I was able to photograph a five day, like 12 hours, 15 hours a day golf tournament with this lens handheld. So if I can do it then, I can do it for, uh, you know, what we're gonna shoot with in Kenya. So let me go over the gear that I have. And you know what, quite frankly, yes, I got some banger gear. I absolutely have borrowed some of this from Canon because I am a Canon explorer of light. And you know what, that's just one of the perks. I get to borrow some fun gear. And we certainly couldn't let Jared Poland have better gear than the Canon explorer of light. So we make sure that we're, we're stacked. The only thing missing out of this entire thing, including my personal stuff, is the shirt I wanted to have made that says, I shoot JPEG better than you shoot raw. That would have been nice, but didn't happen. First off, we have the Canon EOS R1. This is the new flagship camera. The reason that I'm bringing this, two things, two main things. One, incredible focusing, especially on animals and high speeds. That's going to be a big, big component of how I photograph and if I photograph really well. The other thing I really like about this camera is the battery life. We are photographing from sunset to sundown, so I want to have something that has a lot of battery life. Now, of course, there are a ton of other reasons why you would bring an R1, but I'm not gonna get too much into it because we got a lot more gear to cover. But the R1, that one will probably will probably have my one to 300 on there, maybe. I'm not sure, maybe you can give me some suggestions for this because I have a discrepancy with that. The other camera body that I'm bringing is the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. Now these two cameras came out at the same time. They've both got incredible autofocus, so I'm not gonna have any problems there, especially if I'm gonna use the eye control autofocus. It's just as fast as it humanly can be. They're both way up there when it comes to frames per second. And for me personally, you'll notice I didn't say how many frames per second because when I learned how many frames per second these cameras shoot, it's like in one ear and out the other for me because I never shoot that fast. 
I just don't. I'm not a spray and prayer. And yes, is there a place for that in sports photography? Absolutely. And I'm sure in wildlife, but by no stretch of the imagination, do I picture myself actually going all the way to that, that extreme as fast as it can shoot? Maybe I'll be proved wrong when I come back from this trip and I'll eat my words, but that's, that's my in my head. So those are my two bodies that I'm bringing. Now the lenses, the first one here, the one to 300, this is a one to 300, it's an RF lens at 2.8. It has a fixed aperture at 2.8. So I can have that aperture setting from one to 300. I love this lens. I've used it for golf tournaments and a few other things and just absolutely adored it. Now, from what I was told and what Jared told me, he said that he's bringing the 600 to eight. But for me, I just don't want to carry two massive big lenses, especially when we're talking about the difference of 200 millimeters and I can just use my extender. Now I do have a two times extender as well as this 1.4, but I decided on the 1.4 because Matt Dirksen uh, and a couple of other people that I talked to said that, you know what, 600 is a little bit of overkill. And I was actually speaking to my friend, Joe, who has been with me to Croatia and Italy and is coming on my photo trip to Bali next year. And we were just talking about this and he was suggesting that I should bring the 1.4 because think about it this way. If 600 is typically overkill and I have a two times extender on this one to 300, then that long end of 600 is gonna be like probably more than I need. But if I need to zoom out for whatever reason, this one to four gives me a wider focal length if I'm zooming out in hopes to not miss something uh, wider that I need. So that's what I decided to go with. Now, is it gonna take me time maybe for not having this extender on and you know deciding that I want it on or vice versa? Maybe, maybe that's a penalty I'm gonna have to play, but that's also the reason that I don't know whether I'm going to stick this lens on my R1 or my R5 too. Now in my head, I would like it on my R1, but practically speaking, and you know, Jared, if when you watch this, you might be you know rolling over in your grave right now because I killed you on this trip after spending 10 days with you. But the R5 Mark II, I kind of want to put the one to 300 on my R5 Mark II because it's a 45 megapixel camera and I can just do an internal one six crop as I'm shooting. And then I still end up with a 20 megabyte file, which is certainly plenty for anything that I'm gonna post on social media, as well as, you know, if I decide to put these prints online and sell them, which actually is a perfect time to talk about this video sponsor, Squarespace. So if I were to try to sell some of the photos that I'm going to take in Africa for others to buy as prints, I would make a Squarespace site. Squarespace, not only can you download a 14 day free trial using my link below, use the link below, very important to use it because it will also give you another 10% off if you decide to keep it. There's no reason why not to just see what your, your photos look like on a website or maybe give it a try selling them and you know throw them all up there. Squarespace sites are so easy to create. I'm just gonna pick one of the bazillion templates that they have, throw my Africa photos in there. But in addition to being able to make really fast websites and being able to update them on your mobile device with their new mobile app, which is great because I love being able to update my website very, very quickly so it doesn't get outdated. But the other thing that's really important and why I would use a Squarespace website for this is because it has e-commerce support. So I can easily put a shop in there and let people purchase different size prints and I will probably end up printing them myself so that I can sign them, roll them up, throw them in a tube and get them out to people. But Squarespace is absolutely what I'm gonna use for that. I mean, I've used it for my websites in the past, uh, my photography website for weddings and maternities. I've used their e-commerce. I've used it for online education before. It's just the most foolproof way to create a website. So if you've never made a website or you want to give Squarespace a try, just use the link, it's free for 14 days, it's super easy, you're gonna love it, and then of course you get an extra 10% with my code there. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking about when it comes to the lenses. You let me know what you think. I know with Jared, he's like, don't crop, but you know what, I, I'm sorry. Real photographers need to crop sometimes, and it's a function of this camera that 
I've got the megapixel range to do it. So why am I like denying my capabilities with the technology of the camera? It's not to correct anything. Like I don't know how to compose or crop my photos. No, it's to give me a little bit of an extra edge and maybe not needing to swap my lenses or plop the extender on, you know, just some thoughts. Are you going to sleep, baby? You are, okay. You like to hear me talk? You do? Okay, you're the only one. The other lenses that I'm going to take, I've got my 85 millimeter. This is the RF 85 millimeter 1.2. The only reason I decided to take this lens is actually because I do listen to other people's advice uh, is because Jared said that he really loved photographing the elephants with that lens. So, okay, fine, we're bringing it in. And if we get the chance, because I was talking to Matt, we are going to do some portrait work potentially uh, in the cultures and in nearby villages. That's what I was told anyway. So that is going to be my lens for that. And then of course, I'm bringing my trusty Canon RF 28 to 70 F2 lens. That lens, just why wouldn't you bring that uh, for anything that's going to be closer? And then if I want something wide, I am bringing the RF 16 millimeter 2.8. This is a less expensive lens. Now I don't love it if I'm photographing around 2.8 because the chromatic aberration is not my favorite, but I'm photographing outdoors. So I'll probably be at a higher f-stop anyway, or, you know, close down f-stop. I didn't want to add any more weight to my bag. So I decided to go with the lighter version instead of going with our f 15 to 35 millimeter f2, because it would just be so much heavier. So I'm trying to avoid that. This all has to go on my back. Yes, when we're out on safari, but also when I'm traveling and I'll get to the bag, you probably see it behind me. It's still got the tags on it. Uh, so that's that. Okay, now for behind the scenes, one of the cameras I'm going to use is the Canon V10. If you've never used this, really easy flip screen. It's meant to be for vlogging. So this is how you will see me uh, doing some behind the scenes with that. Now the rest of the gear, let's just talk about strappage. Uh, I'm using a spider holster. So I typically have, and I will be bringing my camera strap. So this is a new camera strap that I am coming out with at some point, probably Q1 or Q2 of 2025. You will be able to engrave your own name on this, but for now, this is a prototype, not totally finished, but I will have a strap with me along with the safety that comes with it. But for the most part, I think I'm going to be using the spider holster and I have the extender. So I've got the spider holster. I'll just be able to keep the cameras on my hips nice and easy, uh, you know, putting the plates on either on the body, like this will go on the R1 uh, or on the lens here. So that will be easy swapping uh, back and forth and putting all the weight on my waist versus on my shoulders. Cause again, these things, they're, they're heavy, they're heavy. All right, let's talk about power and memory cards. Really memory cards, I'm bringing my arsenal. I've got three one terabyte CF express cards from Lexar. These are the gold and silver versions. And then I do have some smaller CF Express cards. These are 128s because what I will be doing most likely with the two CF Express card slots on the R1, I'm going to have one of them recording RAW and one of them recording JPEG. I know, I know, just JPEG, how dare I? But I'll probably end up Wi-Fiing some of these JPEGs right to my phone and posting while I'm there in Africa. And I don't wanna do that with the RAW files. I wanna do that with a file that's going to be faster. Now, the R5 Mark II, I'll probably throw in one of the one terabyte uh, cards into there as well as this one takes SD. So I wanna make sure that I'm doing um, a V90 minimum. So this is the Lexarts Gold, it's a V90, 256 gigabytes. So I've got those there. And that, when we get into the readers, I've got a reader that plugs right into my phone. So the reason why I'm going to photograph raw on the SD card is because I can plug it right into my phone and then I'm not worrying about the Wi-Fi and it being slower. It's much easier to edit raw and I'll throw it in Lightroom Mobile. But the reason why I want JPEGs as well as raw in general is when I use my regular card reader, we've got the Lexar card reader here with SD and CF Express cards. Going to my Lexar, this is the SL500. This is a four terabyte. I have a four terabyte and a two terabyte. The raw files and JPEGs are going to both, but 
ultimately when I come home and I back up my files, I back them up online to two different places. One, I back them up to SmugMug, which for my plan only takes JPEG files. So I back everything up to SmugMug, every single one of the photos that I took and having those JPEGs makes that really easy for me. Now my raw files, of course, I'm going to put on my hard drive that I use with the Lexar workflow as well as my NAS and then up to Dropbox where I keep some of the raw files for a bit. So that's the reason behind raw plus JPEG is because my backup method as well as editing on the spot, JPEGs serve me in a couple different ways. Not that I'm not shooting raw, um, but quite honestly, most of the photos you see pretty much everywhere on my website and my Instagram are all from JPEG because I usually take my same day edits. Those are my favorites. I edit them right there on Lightroom Mobile on my phone and that's what I end up posting. So that's what it is, is what it is, but I still shoot raw. Okay, we are going to bring bad one battery charger for the R5 Mark II, one battery charger for the R1, which is annoying, but we're gonna do three batteries for each. I'll be able to charge every night. And I do have two separate converters uh, for the British plugs that they have. And I've got two USB, two to USB-C or whatever we name those. Old USB to new USB. Uh, what else do we have on here? Headphones, that's kind of an obvious. Tenba, oh, let's get to the bag. I got my Tenba card reader and then we're gonna get to the bag itself. So this is the beautiful bag that I have. Now this can hold a 16 inch laptop. My laptop is only 13 inch, it's a MacBook Pro. So that'll be more than enough space. Oh, this, do they have the name of this on here? It's 24L, it's the Axis, that's right. So this is a Tenba Axis 24L backpack. It's rugged. This is very similar to one of my favorite backpacks, the DNA that I use all the time, but this one is going to be able to handle the length of the one to 300, which is absolutely crucial and why I had to get a new bag versus the other one that I have. So I'll be able to put my laptop in here. I'm also going to bring a battery pack, battery power pack. This is the Anchor battery power pack. And thanks to my friend, Sydney Deungzin, uh, I have boot also an Anchor plug for my laptop. Now this replaces that big old thing that comes with your laptop. Um, now we just have this little one and it also has right here a USB-C and regular USB or USB 2, whatever we call that, uh, in, in the plug as well. So that's going to be really helpful with all the charging that I have to do, everything that I have to bring. Awesome backpack. Okay, I think we covered all the actual gear. Now let's cover the personal items because so much of what I'm bringing with me it counts as far as I'm concerned as like personal PPP, like personal protective gear. Is that what the acronym is for PPP? So I want to show you all that too, because it's important that while you're photographing, you're covered on a lot of the other elements and things that might happen while you're out. Number one, salmonella and uh, malaria. So typhoid vaccine is one that I received as well as the malaria pills that we take starting two days before until uh, I think like a week after or something and every day you just take one pill. There are other options. I did have one, but I was told that it, it might cause me to hallucinate the one that you take once a week. So we changed. Okay. So we, we got to I got to use my hands down, baby. All right, so for my other bag, this is a Patagonia bag right here. It's a 70 liter, I believe, duffel bag that's just going to be for my shoulder and my other bag, and I have to carry a week and a half's worth of stuff in here. Now, I'm not gonna show you all the little tiny delicates, but I did wanna show you the main things. So, number one, mosquito repellent bracelets. So you don't have to spray yourself every day or bring that kind of liquid with you. I've got bracelets. This is thanks to my friend, Margaret, uh, who is from Kenya. And she told me that I need to grab these bad boys. So I definitely did that. Yeah, I will be on my period. So those are there. Uh, but along the lines of the period, I'm doing this for the girls. And I'm just gonna show you because I mentioned that we're going to be out from morning until night. And uh, you know, that definitely is a, an issue when it comes to potentially having to change that personal item. So let me go get the thing that I'm actually bringing. I had to get this from the bathroom. I don't have the original box, but there's the Shark Week 
So what I'm actually doing are bringing these discs. They're from a company called Flex and you can wear these for up to 12 hours. Uh, and it's definitely less waste as well as not needing to change all the time. So that's definitely uh, really important when it comes to girls who have to be on shoots all day. When it comes to wedding days too, those save me corporate jobs all the time. Golf tournament, like that is an absolute must. Now I'm going to put these away for all of you who are cringing right now. You know what? No, cringe away. I'm keeping Shark Week here. Okay. What else do we have? This is also something that's really important. I've got this little toiletry set, but what I want you to notice is this bag because in Kenya, plastic bags, like your little Ziploc bags are banned. You can't have them. So you need to have stuff like this. So here's the one that is for malaria. It's Adovacuine Proguinal. That's the one we're taking for that. Uh, this, oh, this is an important one. Uh, Africa can be dusty. So I have some face masks that are really easy to put on and they just hook on your ears and they're in you know, safari colors. So I can wear it around my neck. Uh, everything else here has to do with allergies and shampoo. So you don't need that. But this, very important to have just in case you have an issue. This is, uh, you know, for diarrhea. Uh, and then this, the, the mefloquine, this was the malaria one that I was told not to take. Uh, and the typhoid, I already took that a while ago, but that you just take at home. All right. Very important to have hiking boots because you might be hiking through the mud. I was told. So we got those liquid IV is absolutely huge. You have to have one of these every single day. If not two. hydration, absolutely key gas X cause well, traveling with strangers. <laughs> all right. This is a good one right here. The temperatures are ranging from fifties, low fifties, all the way up to eighties. We're leaving before sunrise. So it's going to be cold. So we want to have something light. So I've just got a vest that I'm going to be able to scrunch up into that little bag. That'll keep me nice and warm as well as, because quite honestly, I'm such a baby when it comes to the cold. So I need like to double up, but this is also a shell uh, from Patagonia for rain. So just in case there's any moisture, I'm covered with that and it'll keep in a little extra heat. Now, the other one thing I wanted to show you or two that are here are the coverings. Now I mentioned it's going to get up to 80, but the sun is strong and mosquitoes are a thing. So I have these lightweight from Padola, Padola, anyway, lightweight from Padola and these are SPF 50. So super lightweight. I'll be able to wear them kind of wherever, but it is protecting me from the sun as well as protecting me from mosquitoes. And then I've got an underlayer that really does the same thing. No idea who this is from, uh, cause it doesn't say here, but same kind of thing, SPF 50. So protecting from the sun as well as mosquitoes. So that is everything I have. The only thing I'm going to add to this is a rain cover for my, actually don't, doesn't temple usually have it. Oh, yep. There it is. Weather wrap. So grab a Temba bag and you'll be all set. I've got the, uh, the weather wrap in case it is raining and I need to cover my gear. So there it is all set. That is my trip to Africa. I'll be shooting tons of BTS. Uh, now I just have to make sure all of this actually fits. I'm sure it will. I'm sure I'll plenty of space, but anyway, um, that's it. That's what I got for you today. Let me know if you've ever been on safari. Is that the cool way to say it? And what you take, let me know what you think about what I am taking. I'm sure you will. And I hope you follow me along for the rest of the trip. See ya. And, and I'll be bringing this selfie stick. This is kind of like a no name. My friend Charles King got this for me. Um, but it's a tripod as well as a selfie stick. I'll probably fit the V10 too. Yeah, cool. It'll fit the V10. Pink. Just, 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 oh, Benro. Oh, it's right there on the Bluetooth, the Bluetooth switch. Benro, now I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go to Africa.